Hi, this is Kendrick with worldmedicalschool.org. Today we're going to talk about hyperthyroidism as part of our comprehensive Step 2 uh, USMLE review series. This is a program put together by volunteers. If you'd like to get involved, stick around to the end to see how. And uh, so hyperthyroidism is just an increase in uh, T3 and T4. Uh, so these are our thyroid hormones. Uh, remember which one of those is the active one? It's T3. T3 is the one that we convert T4 into so it can be active. I've got uh, George and Barbara Bush here uh, because they were both uh, diagnosed with hyperthyroidism at a similar time. They both had Graves' disease, and the weird thing was that their dog, Millie, also was diagnosed at a similar time. Pretty creepy. So the pathophysiology of Graves' disease or of uh, hyperthyroidism can be uh, of several different causes. The most common is Graves' disease, which is what George and Barbara have. And um, Graves' disease is, ca is an autoimmune disease caused by antibodies that attach to the TSH receptors on your thyroid gland. So they basically are mimicking TSH, telling the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. So these are usually associated or often associated with other uh, autoimmune diseases, so keep an eye out for those. Second most common is toxic multinodular goiter. And um, this is just a, a goiter that uh, starts producing too much, uh, too much thyroid hormone. We also have toxic adenoma which is just a, a single nodule uh, that becomes toxic as opposed to um, uh, other uh, adenomas which, which may not produce uh, thyroid hormone. Thyroiditis um, is a, usually a temporary cause where um, you have some inflammation of the thyroid and it causes uh, extra release of thyroid hormone. Um, it's not necessarily a production of more thyroid hormone, but a, an extra release in a, in a temporary period of time. There's also drug-induced hyperthyroidism. Uh, we usually think of amiodarone here. I don't know about this mechanism, so if you do know, please leave it in the comments so other people can figure it out, so I can figure it out. Um, but amiodarone can also cause hyperthyroid symptoms. So the history, these patients come in, they uh, say, Doc, I've just kind of been anxious lately. Uh, I've lost also a bunch of weight, which is awesome, um, but, uh, but I wasn't intending to, so it kind of worries me a little bit. And um, also just kind of feels like my heart beats fast uh, and I'm hot all the time. So those are a lot of the ones that will come up as, as chief complaints. Um, maybe they, they might not uh, volunteer that they have diarrhea as well, but that's something you should certainly ask for. Menstrual abnormalities, uh, definitely ask for. And sometimes they'll have uh, chest pain that, that may m mimic uh, cardiac chest pain. So those are some things to ask for on history, then on exam. Uh, note weight loss, um, sorry, unintended weight loss. Uh, you'll you'll maybe pick up, um, but of course they, they may tell you about it as well. Hair loss. The women are, are certainly likely to tell you that they're losing their hair. Uh, the men may not, may not volunteer that information. Then there's the bulging, uh, staring eyes. Now there's a couple different reasons you might have this, um, a couple different mechanisms anyway. One of them is swelling of the extraocular muscles. And anybody with hyperthyroidism can get swelling of the extraocular muscles, which kind of makes their eyes bulge a little bit, and it also makes their eyes not move as much, which makes them kind of staring looking eyes. Um, but the other kind is exophthalmus, which has a similar look to it where they're bulging, but it's different because it's caused by swelling of the periorbital fat. And, uh, and that's only caused by Graves' disease. So similar looking manifestations, but different mechanisms. Uh, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that uh, the bulging eyes of normal hyperthyroidism is reversible with treatment, whereas exophthalmus 
is not reversible unless you do surgery on it. So correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's the case. Um, hyperactive reflexes you'll see on exam, moist skin, uh, pretibial myxedema. I should have uh, found a picture of this, but I didn't. So look up a picture of that. And uh, thyroid bruise, those are things that you'll just see in Graves' disease. AFib is kind of an important point here because it's, it's fairly common um, in hyperthyroidism. And it's also fairly common if you test patients with, uh, with AFib to find hyperthyroidism. So it, that may be the only thing that they're presenting with. And I heard a statistic that I didn't, I didn't double check, but I heard that 10 to 20% of people with AFib are thyrotoxic. So I'm not sure if that's true, but it would, uh, it would be enough to tell me that people with new AFib should at least be considered for hyperthyroid. On our differential, there's, there's actually plenty of things we could have put here. I just included these ones because I have a story about one of them. Uh, there's a nurse that I've been working with recently who has lost quite a bit of weight and she's kind of been a little bit more erratic, a little bit more anxious lately. And uh, she's been recently accused of uh, doing meth by her coworkers. And of course that sent her into a, a big uh, emotional uh, fight with with uh, some of the coworkers. And um, she most likely actually has hyperthyroidism. Um, she's had a couple tests done, but hasn't quite gotten it diagnosed yet. But she's got the bulging eyes. She's got unintentional weight loss. She's been really anxious and have had a hard time sleeping. She's also um, she's also real sweaty, and this has all happened over the last year. And uh, and so she, she is most likely hyperthyroid, and uh, hopefully doesn't lose her job because people think she's on meth. Um, just general anxiety will present in, in a similar way sometimes. Struma ovary, I mentioned here just because I wouldn't have thought about it. It's a um, thyroid tissue in the ovaries, so that's something that needs to be worked up. The diagnosis. Um, serum TSH is our main diagnostic lab, lab test here. I've seen uh, normals between... Uh, 0.3 to 0.5 uh, to 2 to 4.5. Um, you can uh, you can probably say uh, 0.4 to to 4 is a is a good range to go with. But the uh, the basis of this test is that if you are making a lot of thyroid hormone, then the pituitary looks around and sees all this thyroid hormone and says, I guess I don't need to make TSH because TSH is the is the hormone that drives the production of thyroid hormone. So the pituitary says no more TSH and it stops making TSH. And so you'll get real low levels, uh, maybe non-existent le levels of TSH if you are, uh, if you have a hyperactive thyroid. So um, you can also test free T4 levels. Um, sometimes T3, I won't get into uh, why you would test T3 uh, because I actually don't understand it but uh, if you do understand it better leave a comment on that. Um, also a, a radionuclide scan um, is helpful in, in determining what the cause of it is. So if you do a scan and you get uptake uh, hyperactivity all over then um, all over the thyroid, then it's likely to be Graves' disease. Uh, but if it's like a hot nodule, you might see it just in one spot with hypoactive, hypoactive uh, activity all around it. So the treatment. So you relieve uh, symptoms immediately with propranolol. That will help you with some of the palpitations and the anxiety type stuff. Uh, and then you have uh, radioactive iodide uh, thyroid ablation is the uh, major treatment of choice, at least in the U.S. Uh, in other countries, it is not the, the number one treatment. But in the U.S., we use this the most. Um, you get a pill for 6 to 18 weeks before uh, the thyroid is, is mostly, uh, mostly burned out uh, with the radioactive iodine. Then we ha also have methimazole and uh, propyl 
thiouracil, and these are um, these are drugs that block the production of thyroid hormone. And so, if you have somebody who is pregnant, uh, you'd be more likely to give them uh, methimazole uh, instead of radioactive iodine thyroid ablation because you uh, may knock out the fetus's thyroid. So, um, and then sometimes you'll do a thyroidectomy. For example, if they have a big goiter that's causing problems in the area, blocking off the airway and things like that. Also, pregnant women who are allergic to methimazole or propylthiouracil, uh, you might want to cut out their, uh, their thyroid or if you're concerned about malignancy. Um, I also mentioned ophthalmologic surgery because some people will get this done for the uh, exophthalmus. And of course, the complications of treatment, most people, especially people who were overweight before they uh, became hyperthyroid, they will put weight on when you uh, treat their hyperthyroidism. And then, um, of course, if you're going to ablate or remove the thyroid, they're going to be hypothyroid for the rest of their life. So they're going to get be getting um, a synthroid or, or some kind of uh, thyroid hormone replacement for the rest of their life. So uh, thanks for our picture of George and Barbara Bush by Eric Draper. And uh, if you have any uh, comments for us, please leave them below. And uh, if you want to get involved, you can go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. And there's lots of, uh, lots of ways that you can contribute. So look forward to having you there. Thanks.